Hi, Kids World. Hi, guys. We are the Fishers, in case you don't remember us. Uh, we are still itinerating around America right now and raising funds so that we can go to England and work with churches there. Uh, we hope you all are doing well, and we just wanted to thank you so much for your prayers and for your support of BGMC yes. so that missionaries just like us all around the world have the resources and the tools that we need to tell other people about Jesus. We also want to thank you for last summer when during VBS you gave us so much money that, yes. that we, we have our plane tickets already covered. Uh, we mm -hmm. still need to raise a little more money for some other stuff, but you guys bought our plane tickets to England and, and we're going to And use the girls them. won. Oh, the girls did win. Girls won. I had so much yeah! tea. I had so much tea dumped over me. That was that that was tough. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> well, and cold to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was cold tea. I'm sorry about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to say? Bye, I miss you. <laughs> okay, bye. We bye. miss you all. We miss you. Bye. Welcome to Go360, the show that takes you 360 degrees all the way around the world. I like camping. Sometimes it's fun to get away from home and see something new for a change. Fishing and swimming and s'mores around the fire are a whole lot of fun, but after a while, it sure is nice to get back home. But let me tell you about a group of people who camp out their whole entire life. They're called gypsies. Oh. A gypsy is a person who moves around from place to place. They don't have a permanent home. Gypsies like to keep things simple. Food, shelter, and clothing are basically all it takes to make them happy. They don't keep track of time. Instead, they choose to take each day as it comes along. Hey, check out the pets that some of the gypsy kids get to take on the road with them. It would be kind of fun to have a pet rooster. John McCossack is an Assemblies of God missionary. He has been working with the gypsies for a long time. My heart is to see as many gypsies that to be saved and uh, not just to evangelize, be able to, to help those who are going in other parts of the world. Because gypsies move around so much, missionary John knows that sometimes Christian gypsies have a tough time finding other believers. That's why he's really excited about a special tent convention going on in the country of France. Here, 20,000 gypsy believers get together and worship God twice a year. The kids love it at the convention. It gives them a chance to meet some new people. The tent convention not only gives them a chance to do some fun stuff, but they get to take part in some special services. We need a new uh, generation to carry on God's work. So many of them have received also the desire to go and uh, do missionary work. You and I know that sometimes kids like you and me need encouragement. And the same is true for gypsy kids. You know, some people don't like gypsies and they say and do really mean things to show it. That's why this tent convention is great, especially for the kids. It gives them a chance to meet some really cool Christian gypsies and encourage each other. God says in his word that he loves every one of us. He sent his son on the cross for each one of us includes also the gypsies themselves. We all the same in the eyes of God. Tonight, BGMC presents the country of France. France is almost as large as the state of Texas. And this is France's flag. There are 23 AG missionaries, 750 AG churches, and two Bible schools in France. This is Karen. She lives in France. Karen speaks French. She says, bonjour, hello. Karen lives in the city of Lyon in France. Like Karen's family, many people live in apartments. 
Lots of tourists visit Lyon to see the museums and the old buildings. Lyon has a lot of modern buildings too. And lots of sidewalk cafes. Vendors sell products on the streets. And people often ride bikes to get around the neighborhood. Or they take the metro, which is an underground train. Tourists like to view the city from boats on the river. France is famous for its excellent cooking. Karen loves homemade French onion soup with her dinner. She usually has croissants and coffee for breakfast. And she loves to visit Paris. Her favorite way to get there is on the TGV, the high-speed train. On January 6, French people celebrate the Epiphany. Epiphany is a celebration of when the wise men visited Jesus. They eat king's cake, which has a small figure inside. And whoever finds their piece, the figure, becomes king or queen for that day. The French people we know need Jesus, just like everybody else does. Although the French celebrate Christmas and Epiphany, they rarely go to church. The beautiful churches are often pretty empty. Since many people don't go to church, missionaries use other means to reach them, like internet resources and TV programs. A TV show called Le Bavard d'Infants reaches kids. Others take the gospel to the streets and to the college campuses. We do that too in the U.S. A church called The Refuge helps refugees who come to France from other countries. Some missionaries work with the gypsy people in France. Gypsies live as outcasts. They need to know God loves them. Often the gypsy kids get saved, then they tell their parents. Little by little, the gospel is spreading. And BGMC helps. The money that you give helps. So let's look at what you have helped do in the country of France. BGMC has provided materials to minister to the gypsies, including things like the translation of the puzzle into French. The puzzle is an evangelism musical for kids of all ages. Over 5,000 gypsy kids have come to see it. Translation equipment for the Bridge Church used by our missionaries, Robbie and Tracy Bradford. Flannel graph materials to tell Bible stories. And they help to reach the gypsy kids. Hundreds of kids hear the Bible stories. The kids say thank you to you guys for giving to BGMC. Also, BGMC helps tra for translation systems for the AG Church. Also, magazines for Muslim kids who live in France. And funds for a magazine, which is called Victor, which means victory. They also get funds to help rescue kids at risk. And for production of Children's Street TV show. Kids enjoy watching the TV show. I'm sure you guys enjoy watching your TV shows too. Development of the Global University French website. BGMC has helped to purchase books for the Bible colleges. Sunday school materials for special needs children. Renovation of a new church in France. There's a before picture and then the after picture. Thank you for helping BGMC reach the people of France. So, so today I want us to pray for France, for the kids and the young people there, that they would find Jesus, for our missionaries and the pastors of the French churches, for our churches and Christians who are reaching out to refugees, and for Christian women who help with other women and girls who've been hurt by others. Also, while we're praying for France, let's pray for missionaries Jason, Sheila, and Grace Fisher 
as they prepare to head to England to be missionaries there. Father, we thank you so much that you love everyone, that you created us, you you love us, you have a desire for each one of us to know who you are and have a relationship with you. And so God, I pray right now for the kids and young people in France that they would find you, that you would send missionaries and pastors to minister to them and that you would equip those missionaries and pastors with everything that they need to be able to reach your children to have a relationship with you. God, I pray for the churches and the Christians who are reaching out to refugees right now. God, that you would give them the tools that they need. God, that you would open doors for them to be able to meet every physical and spiritual need of each refugee. And God, we pray for the Christian women who have helped other women and girls who have been hurt by others, that you would provide for their ministry, that you would help them as they minister to each other and to um, these girls, Father, that you would just truly give them everything they need to do this ministry. And finally, God, we pray for the Fisher family. We thank you for calling all three of them to be missionaries to England. We just ask, Lord, that you would open every door that they need to, to be able to go and do the work you've called them to. God, we ask that you would continue to provide financially for them, that you would help raise funds so that they could um, have a monthly support that they need in order to be able to go over. And God, that you would just open every door and that you would give them peace, strength, wisdom, and just focus as they work to do what you've called them to do. We thank you for them. We ask that you just be very present in their life and in ministry and that um, you would just bless them in every way. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we are going to hear a true missionary story from the country of France. Hope you enjoy it. Johann's Miracle Mark and Marceline Grusel were filled with joy at the birth of their second boy, Johann. But only a few weeks after their birth, the joy turned into worry. Johann had breathing problems. The Cluzels called their pastor and asked for prayer. God touched Johann, and after just a few days, Mark and Marceline were able to bring him home from the hospital. But the doctor told them that Johann would have to keep an inhaler with him at all times. All through his early years, Johann continued to have problems breathing. He would get infections in his lungs and severe asthma and was hospitalized frequently. Yolahan lived with a constant fear of, of not being able to breathe. Often he felt like you might feel if you put your hand over your nose and mouth and could not get in air. Johann's parents continued to ask God to heal their little boy. When Johann was three years old, he had another terrible bronchial infection and was sent to the hospital. He stayed there for several weeks. During that time, the people of the church sought the Lord in prayer and in fasting, asking God to heal Johann once and for all. Johann's father, Mark, knew about the power of God because God had delivered him from drugs and smoking and drinking years ago. Mark wanted to tell others about God's goodness and his salvation, so he trained for the ministry. At the time that Johann was born, Mark was helping out a church in the suburbs of Paris, France. In France, children begin public school at the age of three. It was time for Johann to enter school. So Mark went to talk to Johann's teacher. He told her how important it was for for Johann to have his medicine. And he taught her what to do in case Johann had an asthma attack and couldn't breathe. One day, Mark went to pick up Johann after school. When he stopped to speak with the teacher, the teacher said to him, I don't know why you made such a fuss about Johann's need for medicine and for an inhaler. He hasn't used the inhaler once all year. And at that moment, Mark realized that God had already answered his prayers and the prayers of the church. As he thought about it, he realized that Johann had not needed to be hospitalized in months. Johann was breathing normally and he was able to play like the other boys and girls at the school and at the church. 
Mark brought the wonderful news to Merceline and to the church. Everyone praise God for such a miracle in Johann's life. <laughs>